Story thirty of Uncle Wiggily's Travels. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Uncle Wiggily's Travels by Howard Roger Garris. Story thirty uncle wiggily and the cowbird do you think you can help me find my way back home again asked the pussy of uncle wiggily as they awakened the next morning after having spent the night in the woods by the campfire oh i'm sure i can answered the rabbit as soon as we have our breakfast we'll start off to look for your clothespin house then uncle wiggily made up the campfire again putting on some more wood and he boiled the coffee in a tomato can and fried some pieces of bacon he had had in his valise the way he cooked them was to take a sharp stick and put a piece of bacon on the end of it and then he held the bacon up in front of the blaze where it sizzled away and got nice and curly and brown and oh how good it did smell and so did the coffee oh it's great to cook over a campfire when the smoke doesn't get in your eyes and when it doesn't rain now we must put out the fire said the rabbit as he and the pussy were ready to go look for the clothespin house why must we do that uncle wiggily oh so that it will not set fire to the woods and burn down the nice trees after we are gone always put out your campfire when you leave it said the rabbit as he threw water on the blaze making clouds of steam well he and the pussy traveled on for some time longer together but somehow or other they couldn't seem to find the place where the pussy lived and the little cat was beginning to be sorry that she had gone camping in the woods oh i'll never find my home again she cried oh yes we will said the rabbit kindly don't worry and just then they heard someone else crying a little tiny sobbing voice what's that exclaimed the pussy perhaps it is one of the skillery scalery alligators children no i do not think so said the rabbit it sounds to me as if someone else were lost in the woods and i may have to find their home too we'll take a look so they looked all around but they couldn't seem to find any one though the crying was still to be heard that's queer said the rabbit i'll call to them so he called as loudly as he could like this is any one lost do you want me to help you find your home oh i'd be very glad to have you help me said the crying voice but i am not lost then who are you and what is the matter asked the rabbit oh i am a robin bird was the answer and i am in this bush over your heads ha no wonder we couldn't see you said the rabbit as he and the pussy looked up and there sure enough was the nice mamma robin bird and she was crying as she sat in the bush well, what is the matter asked the rabbit i will tell you said the robin you know there is a bird called the cowbird or cuckoo and that bird is too lazy to build a nest for itself so what do you think it does what asked the pussy why it goes around laying its eggs in the nests of other birds said the robin then we birds have to hatch out the cowbird's eggs and when her children come out they are so unpleasant that they shove our little birdies right out of the nest and eat all the things we mamma birds bring home to our little ones ha that is very unpleasant to say the least spoke the rabbit and are there any cowbirds in your nest now mrs robin not yet but there are three of the cowbirds eggs here and they will soon hatch out why don't you toss out the cowbirds eggs asked the pussy then you won't have to hatch them i would said the robin only i am not strong enough for i have been ill and my husband is out of work and he is looking for some more so i don't know what to do about it Oh dear and she cried again ha 
we must see what we can do said uncle wiggily who always liked to help people who were in trouble i think i have a plan what is it asked the robin well i can't climb up that bush for my paws are not built for that sort of thing but the pussy can climb very nicely as she has sharp claws indeed i can said the pussy and i will and i'll throw out the cowbird's eggs for you so those bad birds won't bother your little birds so uncle wiggily gave the pussy a boost up the bush in which the robin's nest was built and then the pussy with her sharp claws climbed up the rest of the distance all alone very nicely now show me which are the eggs of the cowbird said the kitty cat to the robin when the nest was reached so the robin mamma pointed out the eggs with her claw and then with her foot the pussy clawed those cowbird eggs out on the ground where they wouldn't hatch now that will be the last of those bad birds said the pussy as she started to climb down to where uncle wiggily was waiting for her yes indeed and thank you very much spoke the robin now my little ones will have a chance to grow and live and just then there was a fluttering and a rustling in the bushes and the bad cowbird came flying past and when she saw what had been done and how her eggs had been tossed out of the robin's nest where they didn't belong that cowbird flew at the pussy and was going to pick her eyes out but uncle wiggily took his crutch and tickled the cowbird so that she sneezed and had to fly away without doing any harm and uncle wiggily called after her that she ought to be ashamed of herself not to build her own nests and i guess that cowbird was ashamed but i'm not sure anyhow she came back a little later and gathered up her eggs off the ground and flew away with them and what she did with them i'll tell you oh just as soon as you like the bedtime story then will be about uncle wiggily and the tailor bird that is if the needle and thread don't dance up and down on the pincushion and make it full of holes so the sawdust stuffing comes out and tickles the baby's pink toes end of uncle wiggily and the cowbird recording by greg giordano newport ritchie florida